So now we're going to tra transition on to like solos that were not like professional recordings. They were just kind of happened to be recorded at the right place at the right time. And there's some cool stuff I've dug out of the internet for that. So uh, for the first one, I think I'm going to play the most famous viral video, saxophone viral video part of it. Two saxophone players allegedly met up on a, tr on a subway station without ever meeting each other before and randomly just had this sax battle on an NYC um, subway. So there, here it is. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> guys have seen that video it's pretty viral but it's amazing <laughs> especially that part where the guy that random guy he's like let me get a solo he's like live from the a train that dude and you should listen you should watch the whole video man because they both play some pretty awesome solos in it i i i want to believe that video is real it could have been staged but i don't really think it was though i i actually believe it's pretty much real but yeah, guys, since we're in, in, in NYC on the subways, uh, here, here's another one from a group called Too Many Zoos. I'm going to show you the epic baritone saxophone solo from Too Many Zoos in a subway station. It's amazing. <laughs>
yeah, guys. That was um, that was that. Uh, that's a good video, man. Seriously, those guys, and you can you can buy their songs on uh, iTunes too. Um, they do those three. That's actually three songs that they kind of. You can only buy them together though, but it is three different songs. Um, but dude, geez, you should you should actually check them out on iTunes. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Actually, you know, personally, I I kind of like these ones better. The these live recording solos better, but. The ones in the, the ones in um, in the actual like recording, like they they do seem a little bit put together better, and but but something about them is just not as good, man. Like you know when, just the live solos just always seems better because in the recording room they're trying to so focused on trying to get it perfect that they don't go as crazy. And what I love about this guy is you can t he's so representative of the idea of like, when a guy when you're playing a solo and you know you're freaking just ripping like just you know you're freaking setting your fire on your saxophone you're going ridiculously well that's exactly the face you make like it's just this feeling of exuberance and you can see it in that guy's face and it's just amazing he was very representative of that feeling i could see it in his eyes which were closed shut which is an ob obvious characteristic of someone who's playing an awesome solo but yeah, guys, that was awesome, man. So yeah, um, this next video is going to be, um, uh, sorry, this next video is going to be uh, of a guy playing a saxophone solo. This is from a whole video where everyone, there's like a whole bunch of saxophone solos in this, and you should watch it, check out, check it out, and see, tell us which one's your favorite. But I'm just gonna show you this guy because he's his name is Beatbox Sax. He has a YouTube channel, and he's just famous for being able to play the saxophone really well while beatboxing. And he plays a solo in this thing where he beatboxes while playing, and it's super awesome. So I'm going to show it to you guys. That was awesome. He was beatboxing while playing a saxophone. You should check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description. He does these awesome covers where he like beatboxes while playing his saxophone, and it's just phenomenal because that takes immense skill. And I wouldn't even I I've tried, and it's just like I don't even know where to start on it. Like I've listened to him try to teach on his videos, and I just no, I can't do it, man. I mean, maybe one day he'll be able to, but Jesus Christ, it's ridiculous. All right, guys, this next one I'm going to show you. Um, it's going to be called, uh, it's it's from this random video I found on the internet of this saxophone player named Alex Hahn, and he plays with Marcus Miller a lot of the time. Man, he's really fucking good, but there's this random video I watch called, that I found on the internet. It's called something like, 
Alex Han sax mo- alto sax monster or something. But I just love this so much. just just a while man like shit that solo is fucking awesome man like god dude if you look closely his you can see his left hand it's just flying on those palm keys man like just it's just going crazy like that guy is awesome jeez he's super awesome man Alex on man you should check him out I mean just check out Marcus Miller I guess and yeah he's in some of his songs his newer stuff but yeah it's awesome man it's a good sax player so this next video um this will be the last of like non-professional recording stuff i guess this is kind of professional but it's like it's just a youtube video it's not like some album that was released you know what i mean so but yeah um this next video is from something that this german guy that makes saxophone videos on youtube i watch sometimes made this video comparing um, a regular brass sax to a vibrato A1, the new plastic ones. And I don't know, I just really love this song, th- this video. Just, And I'm going to show you part of it. And it's just like, I really like it, man. He's awesome, man.
Yeah, guys, I really love that freaking video. Um, I'll put a link in the description again. It's it's just really good, man. And a lot of people are disgusted by me when I say this, but honestly, in the video, I really do like the the sound of that plastic vibrato sax, A1 sax, a little bit better. And I'm saying that with like, if he was a if he was playing a Mark Six, Elmer Mark Six, or a Cannonball, or a Kilworth, or a Yuna Kazawa. Dude, obviously those would sound way the hell better than the little plastic one, but if you actually really think about it, that that's a $700 saxophone, the plastic one, versus some $200 student model piece of shit. And honestly, he probably thought it was a piece of shit too. And honestly, I just don't think there was very much character to the tone. While there was something semi, like sort really unique to that plastic one, which I liked, it was different. It wasn't nearly as bright. It was a darker tone, but something about it I really liked. I, I kind of like that dark sound, man. Um, obviously not as good as like a Selmer Mark VI. Just the sheer power of a Selmer Mark VI or a Cannonball or a Kilworth or something. But in this particular example, I think it actually... I'm going to commend uh, Vibrato for making such a great plastic saxophone. Because I actually think it's better than um, that little student model and plus why are you gonna hate on plastic saxophones you know who played a plastic saxophone charlie parker played a grafton sax to this day i think his grafton plastic sax is the most valuable saxophone in the world so you can't hate on plastic saxophones anyway guys next we're going to be transitioning into this section about like solos that i've experienced personally videos that I've dug through the out of the rubble off Facebook and I'm going to be showing you these ancient videos of me playing my saxophone. Um, we're going to start with the very origin story. Actually, you know what? No. Before we start with the origin story, I'm going to start with this random, so this random solo. I'm in it. I'm not playing in it really, but um, I just want to show you this guy named Craig Durst who played with our band once because he knew Mr. Austin way many years ago. This incredible sax player, man. He was really good, and he played with us, and he was a super awesome guy. And I just want to show you it. It's a little random. It doesn't really fit that well, but the solo is super good, so I figured I'd put it in here before we get into the saga about my solos throughout the years. So here it is.
Yeah, guys, that um, <clears throat> that was Craig Durst. <clears throat> that solo is fucking ridiculous. It's crazy. Even at the end, um, he starts playing the melody in the altissimo range. Like, Jesus Christ, that guy plays. He played well. Man, it was ridiculous. He was an old like college friend of Mr. Austin, who has like a master's degree in music, and um, he was our music teacher. He was that African American guy in the background. Background, um, but man, dude. Craig Durst is such a good saxophone player. And it's funny, you can tell um, Mary Durst, his wife, looks at him. The second he starts playing in the altissimo range, the, the melody, she looks at him like, what the heck, that wasn't rehearsed. You better not fuck this up. Yeah, I don't know, maybe she wasn't thinking that, but that's just what I got out of it. Like, what the, like as if Craig Durst just kind of did it on the spot, just winging it. That wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, it was funny, and there was this one time me and Eric were rehearsing with him, and we were the only ones there, besides Mr. Austin, because like, we skipped our sixth period for it, we had permission, but everyone else was too lame to rehearse a little bit more, but we ended up in this dumb nerd class that Mr. Austin was teaching, that these, this it's like some mixed course class, but Craig Durst was there, just kind of like, showing off, and there was this, a bunch of the people in that class were really dumb, they didn't want to be there. And this one jerk named Manny kept disrespecting Mr. Austin and Craig Durst. And Craig Durst pwned him. Because he, like, Mr. Austin and him were, like, jamming, like, old-time bros. And Craig Durst was playing his solo. And he literally walked up and stood on the chair next to Manny and played in his face. And he just, he just freaking pwned him, man. It was, it was amazing. That day was amazing. But Craig Durst was such a cool guy. If I ever get to meet him again, it'll be awesome. Him and his wife should ride around on Harley Davidson's. They're legends.